In this video, we will continue to practice evaluating inverse trig functions such as these. In the previous video, we already did problems 1 through 8. So if you didn't watch that, you might want to go back and check it out because it included the introduction to the concept. Um, but now we're just going to go ahead and do number 9 through 16. Number 9. The inverse cotangent of negative radical 3. You should be asking yourself the cotangent of what angle is equal to negative radical 3. I am more comfortable with tangent, so this would be the same as ask, asking myself the tangent of what angle is negative 1 over radical 3. Well, what is the reference angle? Okay, just like before, the reference angle is pi over 6. Okay, now that's not the answer because the tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over radical 3, not negative 1 over radical 3. So I need to think a little bit harder. Okay, so the way I think about it, um, I should be picturing or drawing um, a bunch of pi over 6s. All right, I got to get these reference angles going. So here come some pi over sixes. Okay, here are a bunch of pi over sixes. Now, these four angles have a reference angle of pi over six. All right, above and below the x-axis. All right, those all have a reference angle of pi over 6. So the tangent of any of these is going to be some kind of 1 over radical 3. It's just that two of them are positive and two of them are negative. Remember that tangent is positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. And tangent is negative in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So, um, we want tangent to be negative, okay? So that means we're going to choose um, one of these two. We're either going to choose this one or we're going to choose this one, okay? It's got to be one of the negative ones. Um, but which one are we going to choose? Well, that's where the restrictions come in. So where is inverse cotangent restricted? Okay, inverse cotangent is only defined for the top half of the unit circle. So that's why we have to pick this one, because it's in the top half of, of the unit circle. So that's why the final answer is um, 5 pi over 6. Okay, number 10. Inverse cosine of negative 1. You should be asking yourself the cosine of what angle is equal to negative 1. Well, for this, we should go straight to the unit circle. You should be thinking about quadrantal angles. Remember that cosine is an x value. So where is x equal to negative 1. Well, that's only true on one place on the unit circle, the far left, negative 1 comma 0. This is the only place where the x value is negative 1. So that's why the answer is pi. OK, and looking at the restrictions just real quick, inverse cosine is restricted to the top half of the unit circle. Um, it includes 0 and pi, so um, it falls within the restriction, so it's totally fine. Inverse cosine of negative radical 3 over 2. When you look at this, you should be thinking the cosine of what angle is equal to negative radical 3 over 2. 
Now start with the reference angle. And uh, to, to know the reference angle, ignore the negative sign. The cosine of what angle is radical 3 over 2? So that's one of the ones that we have memorized. Uh, that is pi over 6. All right, again, please make sure that you have memorized all of these nine values. So the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. So that's the reference angle is not the final answer. Um, but knowing that the reference angle is pi over 6 allows us to draw a diagram of pi over 6's. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, here's a diagram of a bunch of pi over 6's. Now, these four angles all have a reference angle of pi over 6. So, that means the cosine of any of these angles will give me some kind of radical 3 over 2. It's just that two of them will be positive and two of them will be negative. Remember that cosine is an x value. And x values are positive on the right hand side and negative on the left. So we want the cosine to be negative radical 3 over 2. That means it's going to be one of these two. So it's just a matter of which one. Well we can't have two answers so inverse um, trig functions have restrictions. So that's what it's going to come down to. What is the restriction of inverse cosine? and uh, you're going to need to memorize this. So the inverse cosine function is only defined for the top half of the unit circle from 0 to pi. So I'm going to choose the one that's in the top half of the unit circle and that's this one. Alright and that would be 5 pi over 6. So when you look at number 12, you should be thinking the tangent of what angle is radical 3 over 3. Now, first understand that radical 3 over 3 is the same thing as 1 over radical 3, um, which might not matter to you, but, um, okay, yeah, 1 over radical 3 and radical 3 over 3 are the same thing. So just put whichever one you're most comfortable with. I am most comfortable with 1 over radical 3, so that, that's why I changed it. Um, anyway, start with the reference angle and see how far that gets you. Uh, the tangent of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 3. That means this is the uh, reference angle, uh, aka 1 over radical 3. So is the tangent of pi over 6 positive 1 over radical 3? Yes. So this is looking good. Is pi over 6 within the restricted area for inverse tangent? Well, let's check. Inverse tangent is only defined for the right-hand side of the unit circle, from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Okay, pi over 6 is in the first quadrant. Okay, pi over 6 is like right here. So it falls within the restricted area, so pi over 6 is the answer. When you look at number 13, inverse cosine of negative 1 you should be asking yourself, did I say cosine? Inverse cosecant of negative 1. You should be asking yourself the cosecant of what angle is equal to negative 1. Now, cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So, 
it would be the same answer if you asked yourself the sine of what angle is equal to. Now I need to do the reciprocal of this. Um, but the reciprocal of negative 1 is still negative 1. Okay? So uh, this, this um, way of writing it will have the same answer. So I'm going to think of it this way. So diagram time. I'm thinking that it's uh, going to be a quadrantal angle. All right, remember that sine is a y value. This is a y value on the unit circle. So where is the y value going to equal negative 1? Well, the y value will only equal negative 1 at the bottom of the unit circle. Um, that's, well, I started to say 3 pi over 2. The 3 pi over 2 that I started to say would be wrong because 3 pi over 2 is like this. 3 pi over 2 starts from 0 and goes all the way around like this. However, um, the restriction for inverse sine and it, therefore inverse cosecant is that um, it's got to be within uh, the right hand side of the unit circle. Okay, it's got to it's got to stay between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay, so even though this lands within the restricted area, it went outside of that. It started within the restricted area, and then it left, and then it came back. Um, that's not okay. That angle is bigger you know, it goes beyond the limits. Um, so instead of thinking of this as 3 pi over 2, okay, I really didn't want to erase the whole thing. I need to pretend like only the right hand side of the uh, unit circle exists. So nothing exists outside of this. So I can't go wrapping around this way into the void. All right, nothing exists out here. So instead, if I want to get to this point without leaving the defined area, I need to rotate this way to get there. All right, and if I rotate this way, it's not called 3 pi over 2. What is it called? It's called negative pi over 2. Okay, so the answer is negative pi over 2, not 3 pi over 2, which would take us into the undefined zone. Inverse cotangent of 1. You should be asking yourself the cotangent of what angle is equal to 1. Well, I am more comfortable with tangent, which is the reciprocal of cotangent. So this would be the same as asking myself the tangent of what angle is, hmm, what's the reciprocal of 1? Well, guess what? It would still be 1. Now, one answer to this should just be popping into your head. Um, the tangent of what angle is 1? I'm hoping that you're thinking uh, pi over 4, because that's one of the values that you should have memorized. The tangent of pi over 4 is definitely 1. All right, so that means pi over 4 is the reference angle. Um, and uh, pi over 4 does give us a positive one. And um, let's see, what's the restriction on the inverse cotangent of 1? Inverse cotangent is only defined in uh, basically the first and second quadrant. Pi over 4 is in the first quadrant. So this will work. So the answer is simply pi over 4. Okay, inverse tangent of 1. You must ask yourself the tangent of what angle is 1. Isn't this just what we just asked ourselves? Okay, we already did this problem starting from here. So we already know the answer is going to be pi over 4. So let's just cut to the chase.
Okay, next. Well, first of all, okay, I see this radical 3 over 3. I am more comfortable with 1 over radical 3. Radical 3 over 3 and 1 over radical 3 are the same thing. So I'm going to write it that way. So this is the same thing as the, co the inverse cotangent of 1 over radical 3. Now, this is, um, I should be asking myself the cotangent of what angle is 1 over radical 3. I am more comfortable with tangent, which is the reciprocal of cotangent. Okay, so taking the reciprocal of both sides of this equation, I get the tangent of what angle is equal to radical 3. So, something should be popping into your mind right now. I'm going to call it the reference angle for now. The tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. Um, now, I want a positive radical 3, and the tangent of pi over 3 is positive radical 3. Um, also, pi over 3 is in the first quadrant, and inverse uh, cotangent is defined in the first quadrant. So, pi over 3 is the answer. I need to look no further than the reference angle. It's not always the reference angle, but this time it is. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe, or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.